Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today in Germany with Brabus for the launch to take a first look and a first drive in the new Brabus Rocket. The Rocket 900 1 of 10 based on the Mercedes AMG GT 63S four door, but with a difference. As the name suggests, 900 for the horsepower output from the new enlarged four and a half litre bi turbo V8. One of 10, they will only be making 10 production cars in total. And as you can see, there is quite a difference. It has new wide carbon fibre bodywork, a more aggressive front end, the new Brabus wheels and boasts some extraordinary numbers and today I'm going to show you through the car in detail before taking it out for a drive as well here at the race park to experience what it's about. We have two cars to check out. I'm going to start right here though, the new Brabus Rocket. Before heading out to drive this beast, let me show you around to talk about the modifications that Brabus have made to the Rocket, one of 10 that they are going to be making in total, but you can see already this thing means business. It is already a pretty sporty car to begin with, the AMG GT four-door in the 63S flagship variant, but now with a larger spoiler at the back, a new exhaust system, the Brabus Monoblock Z wheels, that is the other car just heading out as well. I'm going to be driving both of them today. Those wider arches made from replacement parts and carbon fiber and then around towards the front it is significantly more mean in its appearance the new grill that you have the wider cooling areas the new extended splitter as well but the significant changes are underneath the bonnet they have enlarged the engine to just over 4.4 liters which by legislation means it needs to be declared as a 4.5 we'll have a look at the interior as well of course Brabus doing their complete overhauls in terms of the visual appearance new stitching patterns and trims the floor mats the seats totally redone from head to toe down here though we have the catch for the bonnet and this is what we need to talk about the four litre bi turbo v8 that you would normally have in the amg gt4 door it says trying to find the catch but in this car the brabus 900 four and a half litre finished with the red and black carbon fiber cover over the top but this car makes 900 horsepower up from the standard 639 that you'd have in the car torque goes up to 1250 newton meters from the standard 900 newton meters it is actually limited though to 1050 to protect a little bit the mechanicals of the car we've got the permanent four-wheel drive system i say permanent you have the option to put it into drift mode where all the power goes to the rear wheels and it becomes a little bit of a hooligan's delight obviously this car is a car that you can use for all purposes you've got the four doors you've got plenty of comfort features and luxury and technology inside but it also now boasts absolutely ridiculous performance to give you some of the numbers zero to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour with the new brabus rocket is a mere 2.8 seconds zero to 200 kilometers an hour 124 miles per hour is just 9.7 seconds zero to 300 kilometers an hour 186 miles per hour is only 23.9 seconds on the way to a top speed that is actually limited due to the tires at 330 kilometers per hour that's 205 miles per hour talking about tires they are of course worn by these new wheel design the brabus monoblock z with the dual layer of the carbon fiber both for visual impact but also for the aerodynamic capabilities as well i'll show you how that's constructed a little bit later on but we've got i think 20s at the front 21 or is it 21 and 22s even on this car itself so the engine is completely done by brabus in-house They've always done their full overhauls. It's 4,407 cc to be precise, which is why here in Germany that is rounded up to the 4.5 as opposed to the standard 4 litre that you would find on board this car. Clearly quite a special thing. Talking a bit more about what they've done, they've opened the sides of the grille for the ram air effect of additional cooling that comes through the carbon fiber here. We've got the new carbon piece for the lower section as well. Still got the active aero inside here that opens for cooling room when required. Obviously, visually, it is much wider around towards the side with the extended pieces. These side fenders, quarter panels are all carbon fiber with this very aggressive line to give the car a lot of presence as well. The 900 badging, new side skirt extensions. Again, the rear fenders as well pushed out quite significantly. When we come around towards the back, we've got the fixed spoiler carbon fiber spoiler up here. The rocket designation just looks infinitely cool. Down below, got the carbon fiber diffuser and Brabus's new exhaust system to go with their engine upgrades as well to finish off the package at the rear. This is clearly quite something already. And in a moment, I'm gonna be taking it out onto the race park here in Meppen to actually experience what this is like to drive. There are some awesome details inside here. For example, just the Brabus logos placed all around 
Look at this, the Brabus gear shifter in the center. But let's start this up very quickly. Thunders into life. We've got a deeper engine sound than the standard car. We're going to be hearing a lot more of that, of course, in just a moment when I suspect we will be going up through the driving modes. You can hear even more of it there. All right, let's do this. It is quite a ridiculously big deal when Brabus introduce a new rocket. It's been 15 years since the CLS, so we're heading out, we're in comfort mode just for the moment. We will go up through Sport, Sport Plus and race, including a race start in a second. But we've got the nine speed AMG speed shift gearbox, the standard automatic that the car has. Instantly, you can hear that deeper engine note, the four and a half litre, making more of a grumble, more of a deeper, lower pitched grumble. But let's go actually straight into, through Sport, into Sport Plus mode, just to get a little bit more lively dynamics out of it. We will build up the pace as we make our way around this race park here in Meppen, which I need to get a little bit accustomed to. The other cars might be out for some photos as well. We'll listen to the cracks there that you get. You've got the blow-off valve sounds as well. You've got a few hairpins. And this is where, despite it being a car that weighs over 2,100 kilos, it's actually surprisingly agile. Of course, the track is widened with all of the Brabus modifications and the much bigger wheels with lower profile tires that it's wearing. It disguises how quickly it's driving. And I had a few track outings to date actually in the AMG GT63S, the regular version. But let's go up straight into race mode because I want to experience the most of this and then I'll go manual in a second as well. Looking, hanging on with the four wheel drive. Oh yes, feeling some of that power. as well that is really obviously quite a quick beastie <laughs> clinging on this is a fun little place to be driving first couple of hard laps to get a feel for the car and the location that's where you feel the torque the numbers on the dashboard just climbing with ridiculous pace throw it through the corners of traction intervention we could go into ESC dynamic obviously with this amount of power you need to be conscious of what you're doing but I'll tell you what it's very smooth and well disguises how big and heavy it is honestly I would like to try popping the car into sport handling mode so the sport traction control just because it livens things up just a small amount get a little bit more feel of it Obviously, there we go, feel it instantly, just not quite throttling us back in the same way, but very conscious of the concrete walls that line the outside of some of these corners as well, so we don't want to uh, end up getting that wrong. You can hear the squeal of the tyres as we start to put a little bit more pace and heat into them. I'm loving this. I think coming around though, this time, I'm going to come to a standstill, because I think we should give the car a go at a race start. So come completely to a stop. You can leave everything literally in the settings that it's in, give a full press of the throttle pedal, and then let go of the brake. So, go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, up to 140 kilometers an hour, just like that, feeling the torque though. The torque really translating through the seat. Oh, traction, look, that is awesome. This is really cool. I'm also now driving it manually. I always prefer a little bit more manual engagement, although with the nine speed, this is where you do find you're shifting up and down quite a lot. The car obviously has a very good automatic setting when you're in race. It knows what you want out of it normally. system of course gives you a bit of understeer as well but it gives you a lot of confidence to really push on and when you've got this amount of power I tell you what I'm definitely feeling the g-forces while I drive it around here just flat on the power long before the exit of the curve and up to the 170s down the back straight firmly on the brakes throw in some of the weight through the chicane just awesome conscious again of the uh, concrete walls on the exit 
like I said, you don't need to be in manual. I just enjoy a little bit of manual engagement. You can feel some of the car sliding around underneath you though. <laughs> I am having a fantastic time with this. I think I should probably take it a little bit easier and cool the car back down. So let's pop it back into full traction control. We'll go back into automatic, pop it up into comfort mode again as well. Oh, and yes, I can tell you instantly, it softens the suspension quite dramatically. Obviously you can feel more of the body roll and lean, but that's the whole purpose of having these hugely variable systems where you can have on the one hand, a very dynamic, very aggressive, very capable car, and on the other, a very comfortable car that could drive down the autobahn at 200 miles an hour or 330 kilometers an hour in comfort and style and looking very, very cool as this thing does. But I tell you what, as first drives go, that was awesome. I mean, zero to 300 from the race start sprint 300 kilometers an hour, 23.9 seconds. That is very fast for a practical, comfortable, all-round, usable car like this. Wow. Anyway, we'll head back into the pit lane because there is a lot more still to show you. Back in, the sun is now poking through as well, but we need to take a listen to how this car sounds. Believe me, the exhaust system, when we give it a few blips just now, and also, by the way, the rocket badging and designation on the grill, we'll take a proper listen to it. So let's come through then. We are currently, I believe, still in race mode. If we're not in race mode, yes, we are. So we don't need to change it, but check this out. That is pretty cool, hey? Now, if we do turn it down, either pressing the button to close the exhaust valve, or if we were to pop it back into, let's say, comfort mode, of course, then it's softer without all of the cracks. It's limited to 4,000 RPM. The way things are going, you can't rev all the way up to the red line unless you're either in neutral or on the move uh, in some form. We've got the extended pedal shifters as well, by the way. Nice to drive with, but we're gonna have a full look around the interior of the other car in just a moment when it comes back in. Just really like this the red details that we have inside here and all of the custom Brabus interior finishes, illuminated door sills and everything. What a drive out here and what's quickly turning to be quite a sunny day as well. We'll go and take a look at the wheels in just a moment, but here we have some of the other parts that have gone into the Brabus rocket, including the engine components, so the likes of the new pistons, the conrods, and plenty more parts that have had to be engineered from the ground up, of course, to enlarge the capacity, including the crankshaft that you can see here. Attention to detail on every single millimeter. We've got a turbo sitting alongside as well, the engine with the bi-turbos. We've got the carbon fiber of the front grille surround. And here we have the entire front wheel arch part, a replacement part made from carbon fiber, as you can see, and how easy that is to pick up, and the exposed carbon on the underside of it. It's left with a painted finish as opposed to the exposed carbon, because of course the majority of the car remains as standard from its original bodywork, but the wider piece that has been installed uh, front and rear in fact. But let's go and take a look at the wheel covers downstairs as well. Here we have a full set of the Rocket's wheels. So the 21 inch monoblock Z for the front, the 22 inch for the rear, and then you have these carbon fiber pieces. Now instead of going for a full carbon wheel, Brabus wanted to use their forged wheel, very lightweight, very strong, and incorporate the carbon fiber pieces for both the aero benefits, but also giving them a completely unique look. So you have the carbon back plate that goes behind the face of the wheel, and then the front piece as well, finished with Brabus carbon. Brabus have always been known for their carbon fiber work. And this basically attaches and then it gets bolted together from the back through to the front. So this goes onto the wheel exactly like that gives you the entirely new look. The black car has now been replaced by the gray one. It's actually a metallic gray paint and this car has quite a few differences to the interior. Some special details by Brabus. Now traditionally they have always launched their cars in a black paint, keeping that menacing look. But I have to say the contrast of the carbon fiber on this works very well for me. I'm always a big fan when you have that kind of contrast. For example with the diffuser, with the aero pieces around the back of the bumper here, of course the spoiler and the underneath attachment. You can see the brackets that they've created for this 
the effect coming through up towards the top and the end plates that are shaped to slightly match with the bodywork of the car. Those incredibly aggressive arches, they stick out so far versus the standard shape of the car. I'm still not quite the biggest fan of the red pinstriping on the wheels, but it does tie in and match with the 900 logo, representing the amount of power that the car produces. And then around the front, you just look at this, they've added more of the red touches to the grille centerpieces. You've got the Brabus emblem right in the middle, which is the adaptive cruise control sensor of the Brabus badge just up top. And of course the cameras for the parking uh, and to help with where the front end of the car is. And down here, openings for cooling, for airflow, intercoolers sitting up towards the front, the exposed carbon fiber, just looking awesome, it has to be said. Of course, based on the latest production run of the GT four door 63S. Inside here though, as I said, completely different. You've got the black leather with the gray stitching, but the central console and all of the other elements, like for example, the steering wheel spokes have all been redone. Even the seat controls here have been reanodized in a dark gray, dark silver to match with the car itself. Brabus badges just about everywhere you look. Inside here though, this car hasn't done quite so many miles. Let's start it up just because, well, basically I would like to get my heated seat running because it's really quite chilly with the breeze that we have outside. But inside here, as you can see, there's a lot of data and things you can have through the central console, through the system in the infotainment, controlled via the touchpad, you know, driver displays, dynamic select, track pace, lap timing, whatever it might be, it's pretty much all in here through the new system that we have, the new MBUX style. So we've got track pace, we've got AMG performance. Inside here, for example, is where you have those data screens. The track pace is your lap timer, your drag race timer. If you go up here, you can literally time your zero to 60s or whatever it might be, all using the built-in uh, data. I think it just takes a moment to load up. But then you have this central console, which like I said, has all been customized, changed versus the standard car. You've got the one of 10 badging here in the center, which is quite a nice detail as well, because there will only be 10 of these that Brabus produce in total. They've also done things like the badging that you have here uh, in the center of the seat back, the embroidery in the top of the headrest, and the rear is very much finished to the same standard. I actually have a complete look back there uh, in just a second. The steering wheel, like I mentioned here, without the red touches, but now with the gray leather instead, again, the anodized spokes and feel and the shift paddles uh, on the back of the steering wheel as well. Actually, the car tells us that it's cold. I didn't, I didn't know that it gave us uh, the update there, but still, sounds like an absolute monster to be honest a monstrous beast i think is the most accurate way uh, to describe this car switch it off we've got the burmester sound system as well mirror and window controls on the door and then in the rear of the car obviously this massive arch which extends quite significantly out beyond the standard car even back here the brabus rocket floor mats and the same attention to detail on the seat finishing uh, and the surround details uh, as well. The very back of the car, obviously it's a practical car. There's a decent amount of luggage space, power fold tailgate, and plenty of room back here with your folding seats to use this car for road trips, for general daily driving, or to use it literally like a rocket out on the racetrack or on the drag strip and have a whole lot of fun with it, believe me. I do quite like the red outline on the rocket logo. Now this, I suppose, must be inspired in some form by the V8 badging on the AMG GT Black series that AMG have done themselves. But here, just highlighting the rocket lettering and the Brabus over on the other side. So this, I think, must be the ultimate baller cruiser. The new Re Brabus rocket, follow up to the CLS rocket from 15 years ago. What a machine, what an epically cool thing. There's no question about that. So I have enjoyed today's drive an awful lot. Yes, it's a fairly big, heavy car. There's no disguising that, but dynamically, obviously it's very capable. And now it's even quicker as well, significantly quicker. Massive shove in the back, insane performance figures, and a brilliant car. I wouldn't mind one of those in the Shamima Mobiles. I'm not gonna lie. For today though, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Brabus for the opportunity to come along and drive or see, to experience, and to drive the new rocket, and to share it with you as well. That's it for now though. Thanks for your support. As always, guys, it's really appreciated. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.